why you need to consider a second passport and the idea of second residencies, second citizenships, et cetera, et cetera. This is going to be part of a, a two-part series. This is going to give you a macroeconomic overview of why you really should take these things into consideration. And then in a different episode, we will go through different ways that you can obtain a second passport or a second citizenship. Or if you've got multiples already, ways that you can generate and obtain even more. Second passports and second residencies, second citizenships, why should you need to consider them? Well, in general, all of the, before we get into the doom and gloom of, of macro events and what may or may not happen in the future, let's look at the simple word of choice. To be able to have a choice of relocating somewhere else or to have the ability to go somewhere else is quite useful. To have that flexibility is always nice. And it also means that your eggs are not always in one basket. Now, as you know from either being in property or being in metals or being in, in any level of investing or in life, you know that it's not good to have all your eggs in one basket. So why do people then have all their eggs in one basket when it comes to their country and not having that flexibility to move around? That doesn't quite make sense. And I think that people don't necessarily take the time to understand it or think about it, or they might not want to take the time to understand it and think about it. And I should caveat on this, for those of you that know me, you will know that my, at the time of recording, my wife-to-be is Mexican, and that I will be pursuing a Mexican residency as a result of getting married to her uh, later on in the year. So this subject isn't something that I'm just looking at from the outside and talking about it like I know everything. I'm attacking it from a principle of I'm also going through this and there are, you know, these. this is my thinking. These are some of the reasons that I'm taking into consideration because of other people I'm listening to and other people, you know, I'm studying. I should also clarify that I love my wife to be loads and loads and loads. And the reason we're getting married is love more than anything else. Although strategic benefits uh, that come with that uh, are quite useful. Apologies to wife if you, if you end up listening to this. Second passport, second residency, second citizenships. Let's look at the macro picture. And if you are, like, like myself, you're a UK resident and all you've got is your UK passport, then that's fine. That's fine to the extent that our passport is generally quite good. Given everything we've done in the world before and our, the way that we diplomatically go about things in, in years gone by, the British passport is one of the best passports out there. It will allow a lot of uh, visa-free travel two places so it means that if you know if you want to go on your holidays to i don't know spain bolivia mexico wherever it might be that passport is one of the best that you can get wonderful now if you listen to this and you are from i don't know pick a country eritrea uh, maybe that passport's not as good as a uk passport but you still you're still stuck with that passport but it doesn't mean you need to be stuck with that passport for life. You can obtain other passports, other citizenships and other residencies. And it's important to do so. It's important to think about it on a macro level in general. Why? Because you don't want all your eggs in one basket. 
that you wouldn't do it when you're investing. Don't do it when it comes to what diplomatic documents you have or why. Let's go to the UK. Let's take UK as an example. Now, we've had our time in the sun. We've had our empire. We've done a lot of good for the world. We've we have probably done a lot of not so good things for the world as well. And you know, British diplomacy is pretty much always two-faced. And I'll hold my hands up to that. You know, the more you read, the more you don't want to know about what's going on and what has gone on. And the point being, geographically speaking, we are, in terms of square mileage and all of that, we are a tiny island. We are, we've always been, fiercely independent to the extent of you don't really like you telling us what to do we'll stick two fingers up at you unlucky and geographically speaking our positioning is relatively good surrounded by water it's difficult to get to us it has been over the years although we've had been invaded etc etc we have come out shining and we march to the beat of our own drum most of the time. However, if you're stuck in the UK and let's just say, dare I say it, World War Three happens and with nuclear advancements that we have had, if you're stuck in the UK and for some reason the UK decides to declare war on Russia or Russia declares war on the UK or China or insert any other country here, you're stuck. You've got an issue because you are very unlikely to be able to get out. And I know you're thinking, Rob, this is, you're talking worst case scenario. Uh, yes, that's the way my brain thinks, but it's also what other people think as well. So therefore the topic's important. If you're stuck in the UK, uh, and it, you know, it might not be war, it could be energy policy. It could be all these sanctions that we've placed over the last couple of years. It could be the fact that you don't like being taxed that much, legally or illegally. You might not like how the government's run, et cetera, et cetera. Challenge is, if you then try and get out of the country quite quickly, you know, immediately you need to go, you might find that quite challenging uh, to then go and reside somewhere else quite quickly. OK. You might be able to go on a holiday. But you might not. What if the UK government turns around and says you're not allowed to leave the UK, even if you've got a UK passport, but you are allowed to leave if you have a second, a different passport, you've got dual nationality. These things could possibly happen. The key thing is don't trust your government. But this could possibly, you know, it could reasonably happen. And our position of being pretty much in the middle of powers in the East and powers in the West might be the UK's undoing moving forward. I don't know. I haven't got a crystal ball, but it's a possibility. So obtaining that second residency, that second passport, if the government does turn around and says no one's leaving the country for whatever reason it might be on a UK passport, but you're stuck there with a USA passport, for example, you'll, be, you'll probably be allowed to leave. You'll, you'll thank yourself that you've got a USA passport. Same with any other country. Maybe you've got a Mexican passport or you've got residency there or whatever, and you might be allowed to leave if the UK says you're not allowed to leave if you've got a UK passport. Hopefully this is making sense. But these, these are reasons why you need to consider getting that, that backup option, that secondary strategy in place. Because if it all goes wrong in your home country, then it's good night Vienna for you and a lot of people. And you might listen to this and you think, well, Rob, you're talking a lot of nonsense now. And, and Rob, that will never happen. People think bank runs won't happen. And as has happened recently at 2008, Northern Rock, for, for UK based listeners, uh, recently Silver Silvergate over in New York uh, went into liquidation. Uh, SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. You know, that's been effectively bailed in, effectively. Um, that's not good either. That's obviously over in the USA. Then close to home, Credit Suisse as well, being bought out by rivals. So a bank run can happen at any point. It's like leaving all your currency in your bank and then going, yeah, that's safe, that's secure. Next thing you know, there's a bank run and no one gets bailed out and you've lost all your currency. You're going to feel like crap if that happens. It's no different 
uh, with, with passports and residencies, but we're now taking this to the macroeconomic stage. It, you, could, you could argue it's a bit doomsday. Yeah, you could argue that, absolutely. And I'll hold my hands up to that. I like to think of it as macro planning and preparation. And that is why you should at least consider having a second passport, a second citizenship, or a, a residency permit for a different country uh, in a different part of the world. So it gives you options, and it also gives future family options as well. We'll be going into ways to do that next week or in a, next week's episode or whenever the next episode is released. So we'll be going into that. But the key thing to point here is you should consider other passports, dual citizenship, et cetera, because it gives you options. It means that your eggs are not in the same basket. You wouldn't invest all your eggs in the same basket with your currency or anything like that. So you, why should you then do it with your passport on your and your country of birth. You should not have all your eggs in the basket. Anything can happen. Sometimes it might be a black swan event, as in we have no idea that it's coming. It just happens. And the next thing you know, it's complete It's complete panic. Uh, I would say that was the same with um, a certain virus that's been going around, but you can argue that might have purposely been leaked from a lab. This isn't the podcast for that. But point being, you could argue it came out of nowhere and it was complete carnage for a couple of years. That's a black swan event. It, these things can happen. And if you don't have that flexibility and other options available, you've then backed yourself into a corner. And that's when that situation isn't very good. If you have the options, you have alternatives, then that's when you can see the light and it gives you a bit more flexibility and a bit more peace of mind. It's like having true money. It's like having gold and silver. It doesn't do much, it doesn't have to do much, but if it helps you sleep at night and it gives you peace of mind, ultimately that is the most important thing. So that's why you need to consider secondary passports, citizenships, residencies, etc. And we will go through ways in which you can possibly obtain those things in due course.